。当慧妈妈刚搬到台湾的时候，她最不习惯的事情是什么 ？I've left my bag at IKEA. I was looking at something, and then, oh no, my bag! Run! run. It was like the first few weeks I was here, so like I wasn't used to it. I mean, this happened more than once. Actually, I've got to be careful now. Because... Hello, my name is Clara. I'm from South Africa, and I'm a teacher in Taiwan. So, like, how long have you been here in Taiwan? In Taiwan. In September, I will have been here seven years. Oh, seven years. Yes, yes. Oh, <laughs> at the first place, how did you learn about Taiwan? How did you know about this place? You know, growing up, you always see things made in Taiwan. I think that's probably the first place. But I didn't actually know too much about it, um, and I wanted to work in Asia, so I did some research. I have a son, so I was. Uh, looking for a place that's good for families and for children was important. Uh, Taiwan comes up, well, came up at that time. I'm sure it still does uh, as a place that's very good for expats, first of all, uh, but also expats with children. Oh, okay. Uh, it's very family friendly. You can still get away with not speaking Chinese. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And was it the first country, Asian country, you have lived in, or you've been lived in? Uh, yes, I've traveled to, to other Asian countries, but I've never lived anywhere uh, in Asia except here. Yes. And what other Asian countries have you been to? Uh, Philippines, Thailand, Korea, Hong Kong. Oh, wow. uh, it does Australia count uh, as Asia? I've been there too. Oh, <laughs> and how do you think like other Asian countries are uh, different with Taiwan? In comparison, well, I find most Asian countries are very friendly and, uh, and welcoming to, uh, to foreigners, but Taiwan is is very clean. Uh, I, Uh, and that is something that definitely stands out. Everything's convenient. I just feel there's a lot of warmth. Maybe oh. more more warmth here than some other places. The Philippines is very warm also, uh. but it's not maybe as convenient. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. What do you think of the pros and cons of living here in Taiwan for foreigners? Well, pros, definitely, I think life can be quite easy uh -huh. in terms of like transport is so great, mm. the, the MRT system, yeah, just getting around, especially in Taipei. I think the cost of living is quite low in comparison, depending where you're from. But I know that, I mean, you can buy food or, or get a meal for very little. I mean, uh. you can go to 7-Eleven, you can go to lunchbox shops. So I think that's definitely a pro. I have a kid. So safety is a uh, huge thing. Uh, my own country, South Africa, is not always so safe. I would never let my son walk to the 7-Eleven. Mm. But definitely, I've let him do that here. I think also, pro people are just really nice and friendly. It's it's a easy, it's very easy country to live in. Oh, yeah. all right. And how about the cons? Cons. Sometimes we get some air pollution. Oh. That's something that that does bother me a little bit. Obviously, not everywhere you go, you can speak to people. Uh -huh. I mean, I've got used to that. But I think as an initial thing, when you first get here, that's a bit frustrating at mm. times. It's not many cons actually. Yeah, those are the only two really I can think of right now. Like, how about your family? How did they react? Like when you told them like you want to move here move to live here. in Taiwan? Uh, my family like to travel, oh. and I've actually was traveling before anyway. Uh. So it, they were happy, encouraging. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so it wasn't like that you're gonna live in other place by yourself. Like, did you feel worried? No, I think because I had traveled a lot before, oh. and my family is a bit complicated. So, like, I have family living in England, oh. and we're South African, and oh. I was working in America before. Oh. So it's always been we've always been a bit like that, and then oh, we'll okay. get together and at like you know summer mm. and then. Move, move back to our countries. Yeah. All right, okay, okay, okay. Because you've been here seven years, right? And how do you think like uh, living here in Taiwan changed you as a person? I think I've become more, well, <laughs> conscious of wearing shoes in the house. That's oh. a huge thing. <laughs> <laughs> I think when I go back home, I always like freak out when I see people uh -huh. wearing shoes in the house. Like, why are you wearing uh -huh. shoes? Like, so I guess like that's cleanliness. Like, I, I mean, I'm not dirty, but I mm. think like, yeah, I'm very aware of like the floor in the house. Mm. I think I I'm more aware of like safety, you know, back home, like not that we break rules, but like we might cross the road when the light is, if there's no cars and, uh. and the light is not green yet. But here, like, you know, everybody follows rules. So I begin to be a bit like that. I think the whole mask thing oh. also, a lot of foreigners don't like that. I now don't really have mm. trouble. I, I actually kind of understand it if I'm sick that I shouldn't be making someone else sick. Mm. You said like you brought your son here to Taiwan. And yes. how is it to raise a kid in Taiwan? Like what do you think are the main benefits and also okay. disadvantages if there are? Well, I think first of all, Taiwan is a great place to have children. Even foreign kids. My, my son is fluent in uh -huh. Chinese. So it's not a problem. I know other moms and, and other kids that they always, they're quite welcoming. Uh -huh. It's not um, it's not really a huge thing. Um, you can go into the public school system, which costs I mean, if it's a public school system, costs, costs next to nothing. Mm. It's very affordable and the education is very good here. It's safe, I've mentioned that before. I can let him, you know, walk to the shops. I don't do it often and I'll do it when, they, when I know there's no traffic, mm. of course. But it is very safe. I never have to worry. People are friendly when you go to parks. There's always, you know, 
he, he is a social boy, but still, not, it's not as clicky as maybe uh. some other parts of the world might be. Yeah, so in a nutshell, I found a, a great place. Cons would be, there's a lot of traffic, so you always oh. have to be careful. Like, you know, I was saying, I'll let him go to the 7-Eleven, but that's something that concerns me is sometimes Taiwanese don't always follow the rules for traffic, uh. you know, driving their scooters at different places. But, you know, that, that just comes with what it is. Mm. Um, the other thing is in schools, how they push education. Mm -hmm. I think our views in the West are a little bit different. Of course, I want him to do well and he does well. And, and I think it's awesome that he can, you know, get good grades in English and Chinese and math. But I feel he's still young, but I know because I teach that sometimes a lot of pressure that's put on uh. kids does concern me for his future. I don't want him to just get so stressed and all he does is learn. Mm. I think there should be a balance and a lot of, I think a lot of parents now in Taiwan, like the modern parent is seeing that more, but there is still this huge drive to excel and succeed and they do all these extra, you know, uh, curriculums and right, right. I don't know if that's so good for kids. Yeah. But does he go like to the after school? He has an anch anching bun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because oh. I can't help with the Chinese homework. Uh. <laughs> so they will help him and I, I'm working, so he does need somewhere, but his one is actually a bit more relaxed. Okay. That's how we've chosen it. So they, oh, you do fight and the lady who owned it is Taiwanese, mm. but um, she has the same views as myself. She likes to let the kids play. Mm. They do like sports and things. So it's not just like sit and learn, sit and mm. learn. But I know that does happen a lot. Would you let your son ride a scooter when he's in the age? Like the he can ride or he won't? <laughs> well, look, I think I cannot stop him. He's, uh -huh. he's already a Taiwanese kid, uh -huh. according to him. You know, his games and his lingo and everything, uh -huh. like his accent is. So I'm sure he will want to. I cannot stop him, but that does scare me. <laughs> it definitely scares me. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what do you think is the main difference with, between South Africa and Taiwan? Wow, it's a big difference. Um, well, the weather is a little bit the same. Uh -huh. um, some parts of South Africa can be as humid, some parts as not. There are some ter there's some terrain here that definitely reminds me of back home. Mm. We also have a lot of mountains and beautiful rivers, beaches also. But South Africa, people, they don't <laughs> stick to the rules as much as as Taiwan, mm. definitely. You you know, like I say, you know, we might just like quickly. There's no cars. Uh, it's got, but here you see, there's no cars, but everybody will be just standing. Uh, you know, they obey. The the MRTs are spotless. South Africa, you will never see that. It's uh, messy. Um, I mean, I've left my bag at IKEA. I was looking at something, and then oh no, my bag. Run, run and it's there. It was like the first few weeks I was here, so like I wasn't used to it. My bag's there, my money's there, my <laughs> cards, my, you know, my, my ARC, uh, everything. It was, I mean, this happened more than once. Actually, I've got to be careful now because you become a bit complacent, right? Uh, like, you're like, oh, it's okay, it'll still be there, it's Taiwan, you know, yeah, I can yeah. just leave it. But in South Africa, you definitely cannot. Like, you can't even, like, stand here and the bag, I would be worried. I'd be looking, <laughs> my bag, my bag, you know? So that, that of course, um, is a massive thing. I think South African people are very friendly and so are the Taiwanese, so that's, that's a similarity. People like to barbecue. Actually, Taiwanese like to do a lot of hiking and camping, which is similar to the people in South Africa. So there are some, but I think a lot of it comes to like the, the rules, the systems. Mm. Our, our systems are not good. Our roads are not always so good. Uh, There's a hole, it's like not even like a day and they fixed mm. it. Yeah. All right, all right. Because we've been here seven years and have you traveled to other cities in Taiwan? Mm. And what, what is your favorite one? Mm, I really like, well, it's not really a city, but Kendig, the beach. Okay. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My son and I went there during the summer and we had such a great time. Oh. Um, it was hot, but I think because on the beach, like, mm. you know, you don't feel it as much. And it's really lovely there. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed that. But also close to that is Kaohsiung. Oh, Kaohsiung. We like, oh. We've been there a couple times because we like it. Oh. It's a really nice city. And will you move to Kaohsiung or not? Um, well, I've never thought about it. I think if the opportunity arose, I might, because then mm. I'd be close to Kenya. Right, right, right. <laughs> I can go to the, I like the beach. I'm very happy though, where I am now in, mm. in my job and in Taipei. Yeah. Okay, okay. For the time you've been here in Taiwan, did you face any challenges? Yeah, um, I think if you need to send money back home, that's oh. that's always, that that definitely is a challenge. I think you've got, you've got to learn how to do it. You can't just, you know, we might just go online to send it, uh -huh. but here, when I want to send money over, overseas, sending money in Taiwan is fine, but I have to go into the bank. Oh. I have to tell them, you know, getting time off work and then the banks will close at three and they don't work open on weekends. Uh. It's always trying to work that out is always, always. So that, 
that immediately comes to mind as a big challenge. Yeah, the banking thing, it really bugs me. I often complain about the banks here. Uh, I find the banking system not as efficient uh, as the West, perhaps. So what do you think about Taiwanese mentality? Well, they're very work-driven, mm -hmm. I would say. A lot of them will just work, work, work their whole lives. I'm thinking actually of the older generation, because you see some of them still working, you uh -huh. know, when they're older, because they want to provide something for them, which is re it's really great. But I think also it's not everything, mm. you know, you need to also be able to enjoy. I think the new generation is different. So I do see a difference in the old way of thinking and then the newer way. I think what I do like in, in terms of in that area also is that they take care of their older people. Oh. Like the grandma often lives with them or mm. the grandpa, they're close and they take care. Whereas I know in the West, there's a lot of cases where people don't always mm. take care of the elderly. They would check on them or put them in a home. Mm. That doesn't really happen here. So that's great. I think they're very honest people uh -huh. in general. Like oh. if they, if you're on the train or something and like you need help, they would they would do it. Mm. So they're quite, they're quite, they're very sweet. Mm. They're very, very kind, very sweet people. Yeah. Okay, Liz. how long are you planning to stay here in Taiwan? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> We're happy for now. I can't, uh. I can't say that. It could be very long term. It, it might not be. My concern is in the future, like high school for my uh. education. He needs more of an English education, but the international schools are quite expensive. Uh. Like, um, the local school is, is fantastic. And I know people who have foreign kids that have just gone through the system and gone into high school. So it's possible he could do that, but then uh. it's the pressure. Mm. International schools, they will have pressure, but maybe not in the same way. It's actually, it's based on him. Uh. I'll see how he is. And if he's battling, I might have to change my mind. Mm. Yeah. All right. Like, do you see like Taiwanese garbage trucks? Yes. Yeah, and what do you think about it? I think they were really great. I remember when my son was very small, like it used to put him to sleep. Like uh. they would always be coming by when he was going to bed. And then we hear like, so it's like a comforting sound. Uh. And my mother came to visit and she was like fascinated by these like singing garbage trucks. I think they're really awesome. Yeah. Um, it's, a, I think, a really special thing about Taiwan. Yeah, and yeah. Have you seen something similar? in other countries? Has Not been? a singing no. garbage truck. Um, yeah, and most parents live in the UK and yeah. I'm also from South Africa. We will leave our garbage outside and uh. the garbage people will come. But here, people like run, you know, yeah. after the garbage truck. And they, they all have their recycling, which, oh. I mean, that that's amazing. They, they don't just throw it in this bag. Mm. Like, they will have their, their plastic and their paper separate also for the mm. garbage guys. Yeah. Okay, okay. That's it for this interview. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. And now we'll say bye-bye <laughs> together. Okay? Bye-bye. Bye-bye.